New Castleton is located 25 miles north of Carlisle and 25 miles south of Hoyk, four miles from the English border in southern Scotland. It's remote, rural and describes itself as a landlocked island. Since the 1960s, it's seen a decline in local industry, jobs and its population. This film is about the New Castleton community working together to create a new sustainable future for itself. It started 20 years ago with their first project. I think I personally started the dream when I saw that there was used to be a tennis court in the old play park and it, was, it hadn't been used, it hadn't been maintained. And personally I enjoyed tennis, I thought oh, it would be lovely to get a tennis court back in the village. So we formed a committee and we got things together, we spoke to lots of people in the village, we did surveys around the village, got involved with the school, all the different groups in the village and I started as a tiny little project thinking this is a little idea but it grew and it grew as things in this village do. I think because there's so many amazing people in the village and people working together and people get big dreams and big ideas and I think we've used that really well in the village. So this land was here, the football pitch, and we did consultations around the village and there was much more of a feel for let's get something bigger, let's get a multi-pitch, let's get a pitch that we can use for football and tennis and hockey and basketball. The methodologies employed 20 years ago to make the changes remain true today. Consultations, collaboration and community involvement, everyone was engaged in the development process. During the recession of 2008, the village lost its petrol station, forcing drivers to refuel 25 miles away. Consequently, much spending left the village. This had a devastating impact with the inevitability of lost jobs and businesses. To help overcome this, businesses and landowners came together to put a bridge across the River Little reconnecting the forest and local leisure facilities to the heart of the community. The uh, trailhead for the mountain biking was up at, uh, in the forest at Dycroft's, uh, a couple of miles outside the village. And the majority of folk would uh, arrive from the south, head up to the forest and never come into the village. So we started a project uh, to put the bridge in uh, behind me and essentially move the trailhead for mountain biking right into the village square. Um, it was a, a real collaborative effort. Uh, as Rocky K, we, we drove it, we applied for the funding and we owned the land on the, uh, the other side of the river and the land that would link the trails up into the forest. Uh, obviously, uh, we built the bridge originally for mountain bikers, uh, but it enjoys uh, quite a bit of pedestrian traffic, as no doubt you've seen behind me. Um, we've got a, a counter on the bridge and staggeringly, it, it gets over 30,000 crossings a year. The moving of the trailhead began to make a difference, but this alone wasn't enough to drive demonstrable change. We started by asking the community two very simple questions. What did they like about living here and what did they dislike about living here? We got a range of answers, as you'd expect, um, but more importantly, we got the common items that people disliked about living here. And that started us on a, a route to uh, finding solutions for those things. We were also able to identify what we mustn't disturb whilst finding those uh, solutions. So, in 2015, um, we formalised ourselves as Newcastleton and District Community Trust. We are a registered Scottish charity and we are a company limited by guarantee. Unfortunately, the recession of 2008 meant that we um, lost our fuel supply. And that resulted in every car owner having to travel a 50 mile round trip to Hoyk or south to Carlisle um, to get fuel. So that added significant hardship to many and it took a huge amount of money out of the community. So the business forum and the trust and the community council came together and decided that the biggest single thing that we could do as a community ourselves that we could take control of was to buy the land and to put back the fuel and that's what we did. It took us a significant amount of time to do that uh, but with the help of um, grant funders like the Scottish Land Fund and many others we were able to buy this site uh, which was a previous um, garage and therefore had a fuel license which helped us um, to get it reinstated and we put back uh, these 
two unmanned fuel pumps, um, as well as our electric fuel charger, which you can see behind me. Um, and as a direct result of that £450,000 investment, um, the, the, the community breathed new life. And as a result of that new life and the £300 we calculate back in every car household pocket, um, the community is better off, the spending uh, locally is, is more significant and more valued, and the footfall that we've generated through passing traffic, as you can hear, has been bountiful. So, um, as small as it is and compact as it is, um, it serves a need, but more than that, it, it gives us a future. And it's because of the investment in the fuel that we've been able to do so much more um, going forward. So, how has this investment benefited the local economy? Robbie Turnbull of The Spar says it has. I've lived here all my life and my family took over the business in June of 2019. We saw the petrol station as a great opportunity due to the higher amount of people coming from other areas to get fuel. We thought that while they're getting fuel, there's a high chance they'll get their groceries while they're getting fuel in the one trip instead of having to go to a city or a town which could be 20 miles each way of the village. Tourism is a huge part of Newcastle and we're seeing a much higher increase of footfall recently um, due to the country opening up again. It's great to have the spa here in the village. It's great for the tourists as well as it's great for us to get the customers. But development didn't stop there, as Steve explains. After we opened the fuel in 2018, um, other community groups came to us to ask what we could do to help them. Um, if they did this, if they did that, what, how would it uh, help improve things, what could they do? Um, so we started another consultation, uh, but this time aimed at welfare and well-being uh, for people within the community. What were the barriers, what were the social barriers, preventing people from getting more exercise, mental health improvement, etc, etc. When we reviewed the development plans, we realised that the easiest fix was to use the assets that the community had already developed. Um, we had the, the polysport, the tennis courts, the football pitch, the bowling green, we have the heritage centre, the, the community, community centre, um, we have the walks throughout the village, um, we have the show fields, we have wonderful things but these were all owned or they were all built on land belonging to the landlord um, and we realised that if we could take ownership of that land then we could develop them further um, and, and do a lot more with them. So we were fortunate enough to be able to open a dialogue with the Clue Estates and the Duke himself and we uh, did an asset transfer from the, from the, the Clue Estates to the Trust uh, for a pound for the land that all these assets were built upon. While the asset transfer was taking place in 2019, the Clue Estates um, informed us of their intention to sell uh, Langham Moor, which is 25,000 acres, but it also incorporates, importantly to us, Holm Hill. Holm Hill is the land around Newcastleton. Um, it has been used by the villagers forever. Um, they've worked it, they've lived on it, they've, it's just been there. And Buclew Estates have always been very supportive of anything we wanted to do. So it's never really bothered us that uh, we didn't actually own it, because it was just part of our community. However, the thought that somebody else could come along and own it and develop it and take it away from us was quite a shock. Um, really made us sit up. So we, we began a series of rapid uh, community consultations and the feedback was very, very positive. Yes, we had to go for it, but we didn't know what to go for. Home Hill, uh, as probably has been explained a little bit earlier, uh, was, a, was a boat out of the blue uh, and, and, and it probably became a dream for some of us, a lot of hard work for others. The dream that I had was of, of owning land that, that our grandparents and ancestors had I wished they'd had the chance and the capability of owning but it was what we done with those you know the, with those the 750 acres that we bought there's 25,000 acres up for sale but what's the use of buying all that land and trying to manage that it was going to be too much for a community like us so we 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 handpicked the land that we thought was the best land the best land to exploit and not to exploit but to develop for the village and was sustainable. It has to be sustainable and it has to be, I think the village has to see it as well and know what they own. They can look out their, 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 their windows, they can walk along the street and they see what is their land. We have now, 
we've now taken that back from from what they thought was probably right from the, rightfully theirs. You know, the, the the Duke was really good with us and we had no problems. You know, it took a took a lot of took a lot of guts and a lot of a lot of you know a lot of bravery and courage from the trust to to dive in and and take this opportunity because you are asking people to to trust you uh, with lots of money and with with planning the future of of their children that's what we've been asked to do is to make it a better place for for the the generations that follow us in Newcastle and and in my mind this was the only chance we would ever get to do that this is a an opportunity that that could not be missed if we missed this I wouldn't sleep at night it, it was such a huge opportunity and I think what we've come up with you know the, the four major develop main developments are the four pillars you know of, of, of renewables of leisure of for, probably forestry and land management uh, and housing these are the things that we believe can can develop with with the help of, of funders Scottish government probably UK government that we believe that we can put challenges to ourselves to to push to the limits what a small community can do and what a group in a community trust can do this landlocked island that we are standing in because that's what we are uh, has a has a a great chance of changing the lives of so many people young and old and those in the middle like myself and and, and we think now if we can run it ourselves or try and run much of it ourselves we can do a better job we can enhance lives make the funders who funded us so far i think we can make them very proud eh? don't just start thinking new new windows for a village hall you know start thinking new housing start thinking jobs start thinking you know for us leisure tourism mountain bike tracks you know new skills you can reach for the sky but you've got to make sure you can stay up there you know it's no, it's no good, no good getting near the sun and then falling all the way back down to earth. Eh? You've got to be sustainable, and and we'll do that. Owning 750 acres of Home Hill will allow the community to develop their ambitions in forestry, renewables, housing, tourism, and leisure, and it's these assets that will fuel the growth the community seeks. But closer to home and to address more immediate needs. The Trust is upgrading an underutilised building to provide new facilities. We've developed the building to um, form a sustainable model. So upstairs is going to be self-catering accommodation for 14 people in the form of a bunkhouse for mountain bikers and walkers. And then downstairs we're developing a community space for learning and for support for local people. We've been hit quite hard in the last year with two major floods and of course Covid and we recognise that the people in our remote village need more um, accessible help uh, to support and advice so that's going to be one of the services we deliver out of Paclou House. And then we've also got the our distance means that our local young people have to travel quite far to the local college so we're developing a local hub for um, Borders College in the building as well. And the hope is that around those two major kind of um, themes will also be developing a range of other support um, services and opportunities for people to learn and grow and develop and improve their well-being. So as part of the, the model of what we're doing downstairs there's going to be um, really good uh, broadband and internet that people can come and access so if they're looking if they want to contact the job centre or if they need to um, do an online interview that they'll be able to come here and it'll be a secure space for them to come and do that without worrying about poor internet connection. We also hope that one of the rooms will become a space where NHS near me can be accessed as well. So if people have an appointment with their consultant working with the local health centre, we can make it possible for them to meet with their consultant in Buclew House rather than travel all the way to Melrose, which is a good three hour round trip. So where to now for the Trust? They have a lot to do over the coming years, seeking investment in leisure, forestry, renewables and housing but the methodologies employed in how they do this remain the same. We, we tackle each challenge as it arises and we work collaboratively uh, to try and solve each and every problem uh, as a community. If we don't work together, it's not sustainable. Um, we realise that working together is the only way we're going to achieve anything. As an individual, we'll achieve nothing. That's the way it's always been done here for the last 225 years and that's the way it will be done forever going forwards.